Someday, robots will walk among us. Or roll among us? Or crawl among us? I don't really know. All I know is we've spent decades imagining the many ways robots might live among us. I'm not talking about the industrial factory working robots, or even the cute little trash collecting ones. I'm talking about the robots that become part of our everyday lives, hanging out and working with us. Who knows what they might be like? Maybe they're weird and funny. Maybe they look so much like us we can't even tell the difference. Or maybe not. Right now, the best robots don't have arms and legs, but still do plenty. I'm talking about Alexa, Google Assistant, and Siri. If you've ever seen Star Trek, you kind of know where these are headed. T. Earl Grey, hot. But we're not there yet. Not even close. Watch. Alexa. T. Earl Grey, hot. That beverage has not been programmed into the replication system. Alexa's got jokes, but I got no tea. The other thing that robots are going to do in the future that they don't really do now is butt in. And that's starting to happen. Maybe you've noticed Siri recently popping up on your iPhone telling you to call back someone you just missed. Robots, or at least their makers, want to find ways to get into your life rather than just wait patiently for you to call. Which brings me, oddly enough, to this little guy, the Anki Vector. Isn't he cute? Hey, Vector. Vector has some seriously advanced software inside, but it's really just a toy. It doesn't do that much yet. It can recognize your face, it can talk to you and hear you, it can play simple games and answer trivia questions, it has a block that does something, but there's really not that much to it. Anki's adding Alexa support later, but even then, Vector's biggest job seems to be just to look adorable. What's different about it is it'll just wake up and start randomly wandering around, even without you having to call it. And when it doesn't respond to you, which is often, its shortcomings are totally covered up by how cute its personality is. Hey, Vector. Come here. Is he ignoring me because he can't process my command or because he's spunky and independent? I don't know, and I kind of think that's the whole point. Sony took the whole idea up a bunch of levels with this guy, the Ibo. It also doesn't do much except look cute and make dog noises that can get to know you and take pictures and learn tricks. It's a robot companion and that's it, and that's fine. But you're allowing a camera and a bunch of sensors to wander around your home all in the name of cuteness. You can turn these robots off, which is handy. But I kind of feel bad doing it, and that's the scary part. In the future, robots will be always on, always working, interacting with us like any other person might. If they're going to be butting into our lives like this, I'm much more interested in how effective and useful they are instead of how cute. But I gotta say, it does help when they're adorable too.